When you mix carbohydrates and fat together, that is the worst combination. Because if you were just to eat carbohydrates, your blood sugar would go up, but then it would come back down. But when you mix carbohydrates with fat and a good amount of fat, the blood sugar goes up, stays up for hours at a time, and then comes back down. Welcome back everyone. We're here today with episode 2630 of the Cabral Concept. Today we're gonna to be going over a follow-up to yesterday's show, and that is the three real reasons. So regardless of what you may hear in the media or even your doctor, the three real reasons for insulin resistance and type two diabetes. Now this is, as I said, a follow-up to yesterday's show because I know and I knew that once I finished yesterday's show of the hidden signs of high blood sugar, going through the top 10 I had shared before, and then more seven of the hidden signs, whether they be the skin tags or the skin darkening at the folds, uh, plus the others that I cited, you may want to know then what are the real reasons then why people get high blood sugar, type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance in the first place. So we're going to go over that on today's show here today. I'm going to link up the three reasons. I'm going to give you uh, one of the citations from the National, National Institute of Health and the co-combined effort, co-effort from the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases. Uh, but before I give you the specific reasons, I want to share with you specifically just a recap of why this is so important that we need to be talking about this on hopefully a near weekly basis so that whether it's you, a loved one, or if you're a practitioner, you're able to help someone with this issue because it is reversible. And we do know now that there are really only four main reasons why we die at a young age, really like below the age of 100. This is the truth. And the first one's cardiovascular. First and foremost, one out of two people minimum, right, one out of two people, or if they die young, they're going to die of a cardiovascular issue. The second is high blood pressure and stroke related, also a vascular issue, right, for cardiovascular. The third one is type 2 diabetes. So we move from one out of two to one out of three now, right? So that's a lot of people, 33% of third of people, but also type 2 diabetes. And the reason why I want to do today's show in insulin resistance is not just about, okay, early mortality, not everybody's focused on that, I get it, but also it's while you're alive. You have circulatory issues, you have vision issues, you have issues with gout, you have issues with hair loss, you've got issues with all sorts of different things, just kidney issues, right? That's why it's the diabetes and digestive and kidney disease, right, um, effort that they're talking about, because for the most part, you are not going to have kidney issues unless there's a congenital issue, unless you have a circulatory di diabetes-based uh, disease. Like, that's the truth. And I want to be careful using the word disease. It is a dis-ease of the body, but for sure, it's able to be reversed, right? Like, 100% it is. So I just want to make sure that we stay focused on that. I am not trying to spread any type of uh, fear or anything like that, just the reverse. I'm sharing with you that this is what one out of three people have right now. It's spreading throughout the world because of some of the things that I'll be talking about in today's uh, specific podcast. But number two is that we can do something about it. So we can improve our health span. That's the number of years during our lifetime that we stay healthy. Improve our health span, taking it from 74 years old to 77 years old, all the way up to 100 and then 100 plus, right? Like that's the goal. And so what I want to share with you now are the three real reasons for insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. And if you don't know what type 2 diabetes is, it's basically a hemoglobin A1C. So when you go to your doctor's office, you run your blood work, and you see your HgA1C, it should be below a 5.7. Ideally, a 5.4 or maybe below. But if from uh, 5.7 up to 6.4, it's basically prediabetes. And then over that is you're diagnosed with uh, what used to be adult onset diabetes. Now, children, teenagers can have it, and it is type 2 diabetes, Okay far greater likelihood of dementia or Alzheimer's if you have diabetes, and again, so many other issues as well. So the other part to that is your fasting glucose could be above 126 on essentially a daily basis when you take your glucose in the morning, and that means you're moving in that direction. Now, having said that, I do have to share with you that I am not here to provide you with any medical diagnosis, medical treatment plans, medical cures, or medical advice of any kind. If you want that, you will have to see your PCP 
but good luck reversing chronic disease with your PCP. It is not what conventional medicine does. However, there are millions of practitioners, maybe not millions, but there are certainly a good 100,000 practitioners around the world, integrative health practitioners, naturopathic doctors, many people in the field, a lot of great chiropractors, a lot of great people practicing natural medicine. And they can help you to work on reversing these issues. I also highly recommend you read the book, The Rain Barrel Effect. Uh, that will go through the entire de-stress protocol and also how you got here in the first place. All right, but let's go over three of the reasons why you may have gotten here in the first place. Um, and that is, again, the higher insulin resistance, I'll explain that in a moment, and the type 2 diabetes, they go hand in hand. The first one, we just have to get this out of the way, food choices, right? So, of course, everyone is going to go right away, why do you have insulin resistance, why do you have two, type 2 diabetes? Okay, well, most likely, 9 out of 10 people are going to be in an overweight to obese category, and then they will have a higher likelihood of cardiovascular, uh, the blood pressure stroke, type 2 diabetes, and what I didn't mention, number four, fourth cause of uh, mortality really is cancer. And so it just goes up. I mean, it goes up exponentially with obesity, and that's why I try to share with people, I have no interest in telling people what they should look like. Not at all. I, and I don't believe that people need to be walking around with six-pack abs. All I'm looking to do is get people to a healthy weight. That's it. And your healthy weight could be different than my healthy weight, right? That, like, that's all. But we know for sure that bodybuilder or not, right, once you start getting past that 27, 28, 29 BMI, for sure that's not healthy. And, and it has nothing to do with body image, but it has everything to do with your health span and your lifespan. And I've dedicated my life to helping people increase their lifespan, the number of years they stay healthy throughout their life, as well as their lifespan. So... That's that. Now, food choices are the number one reason. But here's the thing. We have so much more science and data. People are like, oh, carbs are the enemy. Carbs are the enemy after you've already become insulin resistant. But nobody becomes insulin resistant eating whole food carbohydrates. You're not becoming insulin resistant eating fruit. And I'm going to link up a previous podcast here today. So head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2630 where um, I will have to think of, I'll have to have my team find the name for the ones, but it's basically uh, the real cause for uh, diabetes or carbohydrates don't cause diabetes, something like that. What happens is after your cell membranes are damaged, for lack of a better term, yeah, they're not able to unlock the door to get sugar in there, and that's insulin resistance. So insulin resistance, simply put, you have an organ called your pancreas, the pancreas produces insulin after glucose levels, sugar in your uh, blood is elevated. Okay, insulin then gets the, pancreas gets the alarm, produce insulin, insulin gets sent out, insulin then is supposed to shuttle the glucose to the liver, to the muscles, and to the fat, all right? So once your pancreas has produced more insulin, the insulin is going to move into the bloodstream, and then what it's going to do is shuttle the glucose, or the sugar, same name, and it's going to move it first to your liver and your muscles. They have a maximum storage capacity. Once their storage capacity is filled with what we'll call glycogen, stored sugar, stored glucose, then it will move it into the fat cells as well, whatever isn't being used actually for energy. So the issue is when you have insulin resistance, that means even though there's insulin being elevated in the bloodstream produced by the pancreas, then uh, the cells, which typically the insulin unlocks the cell membrane to allow the glucose to come in, it's not working. So then your body starts to produce more and more insulin straining the pancreas uh, to be able to bring down blood sugar levels. Okay, so that's essentially insulin resistance. And then it doesn't work, what happens is now uh, you become type 2 diabetic, and then you have to go on some type of medication to begin to help lower those blood sugar levels. But here's the thing. Again, nobody's causing this by eating whole food carbohydrates. So what's a whole food carbohydrate? Sweet potatoes, yams, vegetables, fruit, etc. The problem is... Uh, processed food, hydrogenated oils, et cetera, et cetera, over time damage the cell membranes as well. So I'm not saying you, you, know, you can like wildly overdo carbohydrates, but carbohydrates are also about energy maintenance. If you output a lot of uh, energy, you can take in then more 
energy-based food as in carbohydrates. So if anybody's ever met an athlete, very few are subsiding on protein and fat alone. And if you look at it, uh, biochemically, the protein is able to then make glucose and sugar in the first place. So it's like, well, if it has to make it and it has to rob the body of more to be able to do that, why wouldn't we eat some carbohydrates? Now, again, there's a time and place for everything. We do a low-carb diet as well in order to help low uh, ele- re-regulate people's blood sugar levels. But what I would say is this, is that uh, it doesn't happen like naturally that way. It's only after the body's been damaged, but then you can start to slowly ramp back up the carbs. Having said all of that, I want to share with you some new scientific data. And this is from all of these amazing companies that are doing continuous glucose monitoring. They are finding that when you mix carbohydrates and fat together, that is the worst combination. Because if you were just to eat carbohydrates, your blood sugar would go up, but then it would come back down. But when you mix carbohydrates with fat and a good amount of fat, the blood sugar goes up, stays up for hours at a time, and then comes back down. So food choices, yes, are a big part of it. Excess caloric um, intake is a part of it. But when we mix, and it's again, it's about processed food. When we eat things like ice cream, what do we have? High fat plus high carb. When we eat fried foods, like let's say French fries, what do we have? High carbs plus high fat. Those are the most damaging for the body, all right? So I just wanted to share that with you. So that's number one, food choices, no doubt about it. But let's get now a little bit more technical. Let's get into a little bit more probably of why you might have tuned into the show. The second one is this. It is excess weight. Now, before, before you tune out, stay with me for one moment. It's not just the excess weight. We've talked about this on the Cabral Concept, and I'm going to link up a little bit more detail on that from previous shows as well. But I want to read you directly from the NIH, and then I'll I'll help to make sense of this as well. So it says, experts believe obesity, especially too much fat in the abdomen and around the organs called visceral fat, is a main cause of insulin resistance. A waist measurement of 40 inches or more for men and 35 inches or more for women is linked to insulin resistance. This is true even if your body mass index, your BMI, falls within the normal range. So that to me is amazing. And why I wanted to share that with you is because, and the the article goes on and I'll share that probably just one more, two more sentences in a moment, is that you can be at a healthy BMI. I've worked with clients, they've come in, and they're at a healthy BMI. They might be at 24, like 24 and a half. But the problem is, for them, and like 40 inches is a misnomer. Like, I want to state that. 40 inches for men? Okay, well, what if you're 6'4"? Is that the same as if you're 5'6 as a male? No, no, absolutely not. It, It, like, height and weight and all of this do play into it. It could be anywhere from 36 inches to 40 plus inches for men. And it could be anywhere from 32 inches to 35 plus inches for women. It really has to do with how tall you are as well. I mean, think about a 40 inch stomach, like 40 inch waist circumference on a man that's 5'6 versus a man that's 6'4. Totally different. Like it's it's not exactly relevant. So waist hip ratio matters as well. I have a lot of free assessments. If you want to find out your BMI or your waist hip ratio, Uh, Just head to stephencabral.com forward slash assessments. They're all free. You can check them out right there. So this matters. Now, let's go on to why. Researchers used to think that fat tissue was was only for energy storage. However, studies have shown that belly fat makes hormones and other substances that contribute to chronic or lasting inflammation in the body. Inflammation may play a role in insulin resistance type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Excess weight gain may lead to insulin resistance, which in turn may play a part in the development of fatty liver disease as well. I think it's pretty remarkable because we've talked about this before in the show, and when you have, the more body fat you have, the worse the vicious cycle continues. And that's because body fat leads to more estrogen production, and cortisol production, regardless of the adrenals, right? Regardless of the HPA, HPG axis, you don't need to know what that means. Uh, Basically, your body telling you how much hormone to produce of those. And the more cortisol you produce, talk about that in just a moment, 
And estrogen you produce, the more body fat and inflammation you will have, and the cycle repeats. That is why we try to help people in our practice all the time to look beyond just calories in, calories out. It's also about hormone regulation, right? If you can better regulate your hormones, you can actually eat more food, you can eat more carbs. Just look at the ectomorph versus the endomorph, or the vata versus the kapha. The vata can typically eat as much as the endomorph or kapha, and they actually lose weight, if anything, not gain weight. Where the kapha maintains the same weight, or they may gain weight. So again, really important, we look at hormones as one of these big factors, all right? So really important, I, wanna, I think I'm gonna keep it at that, but I'm gonna link up an additional podcast on how body fat creates more estrogen dominance, all right? This is really important for women, especially if you have fertility-based issues, you've got bloating um, during the last seven days to 10 days of your cycle, you have oilier skin, adult acne, especially during that luteal phase, the last, let's say, 10 days or so. Um, you might have some hair thinning, you might have lower mood, more towards depression, especially again that last week. Check out my show on estrogen dominance. We'll link it up at stephencabral.com forward slash 2630. All right, the last point is this, cortisol. Cortisol is one more reason for insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes, and it has nothing to do directly with blood sugar, except that the more cortisol you produce, the more you're going to break down that stored sugar that we talked about before, which is in the form of glycogen. That means without you eating any carbohydrates, without you, you know, doing anything you think to spike your blood sugar levels, if you are in a state of fight or flight, producing cortisol due to pain, inflammation, body fat gain, et cetera, you produce more cortisol. When you produce that cortisol, you, uh, it's a glucocorticoid, so your body's told to break down stored sugar, bring it in the bloodstream, and now all of a sudden, carbs or no carbs, your blood sugar is back up. And so this is really important to understand when we, when we look beyond just the typical, oh, I just need to eat less you know, carbohydrates. Well, maybe, maybe. That, I don't know that that's the, you know, end all be all because you should be able to have a healthy functioning body and still eat carbohydrates. Like it's a conventional medicine approach to just say, don't eat any carbs for the rest of your life. It's, it's a really, it's not even green medicine. It's really more like conventional medicine where the fix is just the removal of one whole macro group, right? It's not the way. The way is to actually fix your metabolism at a foundational level, fix the cell membrane health, and then slowly be able to reintegrate those carbohydrates into your diet. So hopefully this was helpful. I've got a lot more shows, if, you, if this is new to you, that I will link up today at stephencabral.com forward slash 2630. I thank you. I appreciate you being a part of this community. Do feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.